Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Uh, I think autumn's coming. This morning when I came up to the studio it felt just like September. Um, and if I remember rightly, when I lived in Canada, the, the larches started to change colour around about now. So I think that's why I'm thinking about autumn trees. Um, so uh, this is something I'm planning to do. Would anyone be interested in seeing how to paint an autumn tree? I'd be interested to hear whether or not you're interested to see um, the technique that I used to paint this, this tree. I just did this one quickly this morning. Um, so I don't know what you think about that. Let me know. Um, this is what's left on my little Meadon mixing tray. Um, these are rather nice, these ceramic dishes. And if you haven't got a white ceramic plate that you want to use for your mixing, um, you can pick one of these up from our website from Meadon for next to no money. And I thought, oh, look, those colours are quite interesting, aren't they? I wonder whether that could possibly be the basis for a painting. I don't know why it is, but just recently I've been feeling very nervous about painting. Well, I do know why it is, but I don't think it's um, something we want to go into because hearing about all my woes and everything, you don't want to. Um, you don't want to know, do you? I don't. I try to forget it all. So I won't go on about that. But what I will say is that <clears throat> it's easier to paint something that doesn't have any pressure on you to perform. Now, this is a sketchbook which I've just received. I've just bought this from Amazon. Um, it's by a company called String and Space, and I expect it's Chinese, because they all are. And it's very similar to the Canson XL um, book that I also use from time to time. This, no, not this one. That's another one. I don't know what that is. That's an anonymous one. This is the Canson one. And the paper in here has got quite a lot of texture on it. Um, it's mixed media. It's for um, abusing paper. Uh, but this one is a little bit smoother and um, I've started to work in here and done a couple of things. Um, this is a painting that I did not long ago um, and I would like to share this with you but I'm a bit worried because again um, I don't know whether you'd be interested in it. Let me know if you would be. I'll, I'll see what we can do if you are. It's because um, it's it looks complicated and people might think it's too difficult, but actually it isn't because you just build it up and you don't take any notice of perspective or anything like that. It's all really quite straightforward. Um, so I'd be very interested to hear what you say about that in your in the comments below. And these are just pictures um, that I've been doing. Uh, Oh, I missed a page. Better paint on that one, hadn't I? Perhaps I'll paint on there to... Oh, no, I won't. I'll leave that one blank. Since it obviously wants to be blank. This one, then, is going to be the page where I paint. And as I said, um, you know, it's... Uh, there's a lot of pressure on us at the moment, as I said before, with the AI, you know, the artificial intelligence and all that. And it's, it's giving me... Um, uh, anxiety attacks, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm going to use the reassuring Kuretake paints for this. Um, can't go far wrong with these paints. And I'm going to use a fairly big brush. I might use the Princeton, if I can find it. What have I done with it? No, that's not it. Um, oh, this is interesting. You might be interested to see this. We are in the process of developing a range of craft Craftamo brushes with Craftamo. Um, which are going to be available in November, hopefully, just in time for Christmas. Um, there's going to be a set. This is a sneak peek. This is the set. It's going to be um, these six. They're going to be available from um, Craftamo with, um, they'll have gold tips and they'll green handles, and they'll all be this color, not this color. And there will be a long, a rigger, uh, a round, a large round, 
a cat's tongue, one inch flat and a mop brush. And that will be available in November. It's completely embryonic at the moment. We haven't decided on the packaging or anything like that. But um, this is quite exciting. It's going to be interesting to, um, to do that. Um, these are going to be chosen. They've been chosen by me. Everything about them is individually tailored to what we do on here. So, um, so there we are. Right, I am going to start painting now. And I'm going to paint a, an autumn um, semi-abstract scene with, um, uh, with what? With seed heads and flowers and leaves and stuff like that. And I just want to make sure that you can see the whole page there. Now, the brightest thing in this painting is going to be some poppies. So I'll just find a red that looks remotely like poppies. I think um, probably this one. Yeah, that one will do. And I'm going to pop in some poppies over here. And just very, very simply, just with like three or four strokes. And perhaps one over here, a little bit bigger, keep them different sizes. Nothing, um, ex uh, what's the word? Nothing detailed about that. I'll just put those in and I'll draw their stems later. And then I'm going to go to, I'm going to sit down. Ugh. And um, let's put in some autumnal type leaves. Let's put in some some nice leaves here. And I'm just thinking I would drop in a little bit of green into those and let that mix and mingle. And then maybe join The leaves to a stem like that. And um, let's see, let's go for some ochre, maybe. Maybe do some, oops, oh no, I've picked up something not very nice there in that colour. Get rid of that. Go back to the, to the yellow. Yeah, I was thinking maybe some yellow poppies, you know. Something like that. And um, maybe orange. Let's... Uh, And then if we put a sort of dark brown, I'm just using the, um, this is the dark brown, the burnt umber in the Kuretake set. And just put the stem in like that. And then um, while I've got the dark brown, I'm going to try to do some stalks up here. And mix that with some yellow and put some and then maybe some more Blobbity blobs over here. And then we can start building it up with the stems. So let's go for a dark green. Mix that with a bit of brown. 
for the stems for the poppies and and the uh, the what's the word the um, structure of this painting then will start to emerge once you start to do these vertical lines for the stems. It doesn't matter if they are a bit broken. You could use a smaller brush if you wanted, if you wanted to make them more accurate. So we're just, just putting those in and then let's have another one of these over here. And we can just sort of um, build things up, doing seed heads in different colours, just whatever comes to your mind. Um, maybe we need a little bit of black in the centre of the poppies there. If we put that in before it's completely dry, it'll just bleed out a little bit. Have they all got stems? Um, okay, so... What have we got here? Some black. Mm, okay, I'll just wash my brush. And um, I think I'll swap to a round-ended brush. I'm going to use this uh, filbert here just for a second or two, because I'm thinking um, about doing some leaves with a rounded shape. And it's hard to do those with the pointed brush. So, yeah, so just like that. And then we can go back, if we want, to the pointed brush to do the centers stem like that. And where it touches the wet paint, you'll get some nice bleeds. And when that's dry, you'll get a mixture of colors and it look quite delicate sometimes like that. Um, let me see, what should we do now? Let's have some sort of bluish green and uh, maybe do some sort of frondy things in the background here, maybe. And, um, oh, um, 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 some leaves here going down here, perhaps. Maybe some um, blue up here. Not quite sure. Sometimes it's best to just kind of let your brush do the work and uh, follow the lead, whatever starts to happen, you know, let it happen. So 
So this is going to be a moderately complicated, not complicated as in difficult, but just uh, busy, busy. That's the idea, busy, busy. No background. Maybe we'll put some completely unusual colour down here. And perhaps some dark green. Um, again, perhaps sort of this kind of shade, perhaps. I suppose the thing is, when you've done this, and you get to a certain point, that's when you sort of decide whether or not you're going to embellish it, or whether you're just going to leave it. Definitely needs a few dark spots like this. So we're just popping in some dark leaves. a bit more depth. And sometimes you have to wait until it's dry before you know where to go next. So I'm putting in some grasses in the background here and hoping that this isn't a mistake, we'll leave a certain amount of light space. But since this is meant to be like a um, wildflower meadow in the autumn, I'm just building it up because, you know, wildflower meadows are full of things with any luck. Make the stems a bit darker on this one. I'm using a bit of black there, which will blend hopefully, with things. And this is also a poppy, so it needs a little bit of centre. Maybe we'll darken the stem here too. Now this is a bit drier. And um, we could have some berries somewhere. I'm not sure where at the moment. Um, not sure if I can fit them in. Maybe it's better to just stick with leaves. I think um, I'm just going to put a little bit brighter yellow on here. Oops. I'm 
Try to avoid smushing the black too much. That's better. And uh, maybe a little bit of yellow here as well. And then I'm going to let it dry and see what happens. See what we've got. Might want possibly a little touch of red down the bottom here, maybe, or pink. Okay, let's let that dry and see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to reinforce some of the reds here, which now that it's dried have died back a bit and maybe make the poppies a little bit bigger. So that they're a bit more prominent in this little meadow. And um, just wondering <clears throat> whether to put some slightly brighter reds down here as well, where I had those pinks, which was a bit tentative. So we'll put a few poppies down here as well. And um, then, uh, let me think. I th oh yes, that's what I was going to do. Um, with the pen, this is a Tombow brush pen. We can put in some details here, which will make a lot of difference. Now this isn't what I would call embellishing, but it's a uh, kind of, um, Finishing touches really, so just making it a little bit more definite what it actually is. And we can kind of go around some of these as well and emphasize the lines a bit. And here we can do the same thing, sort of put some veins in these leaves if you want. Once you start, you won't be able to stop. That's the thing. Um, over here, we just darken these down a little bit, just join them up a little bit. We can also emphasize the blacks in the middle of the poppies. These leaves or flowers here can have some stems. Put in a little bit of shadow on there, strengthen that a little bit. So you're not covering up the watercolour that you've done, but just enhancing it really, I think is the idea. Um, you could yeah, you could put a little bit of black on here to just keep it fairly light. Make sure you keep the balance right. And put in a couple of leaf, leaf shapes here, emphasize them a bit more. Same thing here. Sometimes, sometimes my leaves are a bit sketchy. can have some a bit of black at the bottom of these flowers, dead flowers, I suppose. Um, yeah, so I don't want to do too much of this because I think it's probably better to leave it um, yeah, leave it reasonably. watercolour. Yeah, I don't think I want to do much more than that. So 
There we are, sort of uh, what you would call an autumn meadow, loose, semi-abstract, a little bit constructed, but not very. Um, you could do a lot more work in there with a pen if you wanted to. You could come in with a water brush uh, set like the Poetiques and really emphasise quite a lot of it. Or you can leave it more or less as it is. These ones here probably could do with a bit more definition, perhaps. I don't know. So, hope you enjoyed that. Give us a like and subscribe if you did. Don't forget to turn on notifications so that you hear when a new video comes out. And um, trot over to our website, diananton.com, if you want to download any of the free sketches that we have over there for you. Practically everything has got a sketch, including this. And soon we're going to be having some Christmas things coming along. We're working on that as we speak. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think also about the idea of doing some autumn trees. Um, if you think that would be a nice thing to do, let me know. And also, as I mentioned about this, this painting here, whether you think that this would be something you might like to have a go at. I got a lot of pleasure out of doing that. I thought that was really fun um, and I wouldn't mind doing it again. So let me know what you think. And uh, so here we are, this is today's little play. I feel a lot better now I've done that. I was feeling quite tense at the beginning, as you probably noticed. And um, what shall I say now other than I love you all and I'll say bye bye for now. Bye everyone. <laughs>